Oh, can't we hot? Praise God. Well, God is good. Amen. All the time, God is good. Just thanking God for the great things he continued to do and he's continued to work in our lives and in our hearts. Um, like I always share with you, God is never, when, he, when we're down to nothing, God is always up to something by the grace of God. So he always got a plan. He's working on something. But I think right now, as far as the church is concerned, is really getting a hold of what we believe, really. Uh, what you understand, and because right now, moving forward into life, there's a lot of things that are happening in front of us. There's a lot of things that happen around us. There's even happen within us that we need to be able to sort through these feelings and making sure that we're reacting and reacting to the right things that's going on around us and in us by the grace of God. Because the things which are seen are temporal, but the things which are not seen are eternal. And so, and you don't want to get caught up in situations where you're thinking one thing, but, you, but your action reflecting another. You want to get your, your thinking aligned with what you believe. And if what you've been leaving is not in line with God, then you have, a, you have a choice and decision. You have to make where you want to hold on to it or where you want to get rid of it or whatever. So it basically it's time to clean out and reevaluate. Look at your neighbor and say reevaluate. Um, the things that you have learned from the word of God, it should be working in your life right now. Amen. If it's not working, then you need to go back and reevaluate why is it not working and what you need to do to get it working by the grace of God. Because when God speaks, when his word is powerful, and the, like in the book of um, Hebrews, that God's work, word is quick and is powerful and sharper than two, and in it to its sword. So we always want to base whatever you do, whatever you believe in, based upon God's word. If it's not based upon God's word, then, you, again, you got a decision you have to make. You need to probably consider discarding it or replacing it with what you know is actually true and facts. And this morning we want to speak to you about what you learn. Is it working? Is it working for you? And that's the key. Is it working? Uh, it's good to know a lot of things, but if it's not working, like having money. What good is money if you can't spend it and enjoy it? That's the key. Now, when I say enjoy money, I don't mean enjoy it in a sinful way, but enjoy it, be able to enjoy in, in, a, in, a, in a blessed way that you can do things. Because you can do things with a lot of money, with money, without having to be sinful by the grace of God. And where a lot of people haven't gotten that point yet, everything don't have to be sinful, but it can be good by the grace of God if we just learn how to do it. This morning, we're going to start off in the book of... Uh, in the book of Philippians, Philippians chapter 4. Now, it's good to be able to have good mentors in your life. Amen. Someone that can speak into your life. Someone that can give you advice on various things in your life and etc. Because the Bible says in Proverbs, there's wisdom in the multitude of counselors. Um, blind can't lead the blind because they're going to both end up in a ditch. So if you're going somewhere and not sure how to get there, what you want to do is find somebody who's already been where you're trying to go and get hooked up with them and see what you need to do so you can have a successful trip. Because in the process, they have learned some things that you don't want to have to relearn again. They can, they can circumvent things and shortcut some things for you and teach you some things that can help you from that, for, without you having to go back and relearn those things again. Here's Paul talking to um, talking to Timothy here. I mean, the church of Philippi here. In the fourth chapter in the book of Philippians, chapter 9. He said, those things, those things which you have both learned and received, heard, and seen in me. What you do with him? Do. That's what you do. In other words, you can't really say that if you're not a good role model. Paul is talking here to the church at Philippi because he was a, a good role model here. And a lot of people want you to say and do the things I do and say, but at the same time, they are not good examples to follow. And you have to decide on who you want to follow, who you, 
who you should and should not follow. But if you if you learn some good things, if you receive some good things, if you heard some good things, and the things you've seen in other people, then you can do. Then you don't implement those things. Those things that are not working for you, you want to get rid of them by the grace of God and be able to hold on to things that's going to work for you so you can move on and do some great things do for God. He said, and the God of peace shall be with you. Now, these are some powerful words here. Both you learn, you receive, you heard, and seen in me. Now, this is, this is where our society has sort of gotten off track is right here. Um, people are not learning the things they should be learning. <clears throat> They're not receiving the things they should be receiving. They're hearing things, but they're not the right things they're hearing. And many of the examples that they're following are not godly examples. If you want your life to get on track, if you want your life to really to make an impact in the society and make a difference, you want to follow someone that's setting a good example by the grace of God. Now, you have to decide who that person may be. It could be a parent. It could be a brother. It could be a sister. It could be an uncle a niece or whoever, you have to decide who that person may be. Because I've learned one thing. If you're with people that are going someplace that are doing great things in life and you get hooked up with them, you'll go too. And being a believer, you want to be able to know the truth, speak the truth, and live the truth by the grace of God. You want to be able to do that. Because remember the Bible said in the book of Matthew, so your life, you are the light of the world. The people are looking at you. They're looking at you for, for direction or whatever. They might not say they're looking at you or following your example, but they're paying close attention to what you're doing. And that's why it's, that's why it's so important is to make sure that whatever you're doing is good stuff, that you're doing good things, especially when it comes to children. Because children are great, they, they mimic everything you do. If you say bad things, they will say bad things. If you say good things, they will say good things. And they're doing it because they look at you as their leader, as the one that's trying to help them, that will help them, that are helping them. And because of that, they look at you as the person and say, okay, if they do it, if they say it, if, they, um, if they're doing it, then it got to be good. But not necessarily good. Not always good. Because sometimes adults can set some pretty bad example for our young people. And young people grow up around this stuff. And, you know, uh, just for a good example, just like um, people get angry. So instead, the Bible said, be ye angry and sin not. You don't have to fly off the handle when you get angry. Going to a cousin, a cousin fit, saying things that you should not say. If you're angry, but if you're around people that are doing those things, when you get angry, what are you going to do? More than likely, you end up saying and doing things that you shouldn't say and do either because that's what you're around by the grace of God. So to not only we want to live a good life, but we want to be able to practice, put into action what we're learning, the things we're learning by the grace of God so others can see us can see the life we're living, can, uh, if they want to change, they will have a way to have someone they can look to to be able to help them bring change in their life by the grace of God. But if they have no example, guess what? Um, you can't get upset with them because they're only doing what they're seeing, what they see every day by the grace of God. And, and we don't want to make sure whatever they see, um, we want to make sure they see the right thing. And the truth that you'll learn, the things you'll learn in the Bible, there's not time to really to regress. It is time to progress right now, to put those things in action, to apply those things that you know or whatever. Tell the truth, even though it hurts your feeling, but be honest, be upfront. Don't say stuff and do stuff that you know for a fact that's not godly because it's only going to hurt you down the road. You may get by, but you never get away. And as soon, catch up with you. 
and, and you want to get into a rhythm in your life where you're in rhythm with the Holy Spirit. So you're not sort of like up and down, you know, you're having good days and bad days and, and all this stuff. You want to learn how to bring consistency in your life. Well, one day you got money and two weeks from now you're broke and, and all that type of stuff. You want to be able to establish consistency in your life and by the grace of God. And when this is done, you must be willing to listen to the Holy Spirit. Because, see, each day, each day the Holy Spirit is going to teach you some things, going to tell you some things, show you some things, reveal some things to you. But you got to be the one to be open enough to be able to catch a hold of it and be willing to give up the bad things so you can embrace the good things that God has for you by the grace of God. If you continue to get rid of, get, get rid of more bad things in your life, get rid of old habits, bad habits or whatever, and embrace good habits, more than likely your life is going to change. Your life is going to change. And many of us have been around people that they don't like to be around because for the simple fact here, that's not the type of person they want to be. They don't want to look to that person. They want to look to the people that are going someplace. You know, it's amazing how people like to be around people that are successful. If you want to be around successful people, you got to make a point, making a, 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 a decision to be around them and spend some time with them and talk to them and communicate with them by the grace of God. And depending on, on the world in which you're living in, it can be different. You got to remember, you're living in, there are only two worlds. Look at your neighbors at two worlds. Godly and ungodly. There's no in between in it. And you have to decide which world you want to live in. So in that way, so your life can become in line with what you're thinking. Your thinking become in line with what you believe in. And you believe the right things so you can start doing the right things by the grace of God. Nothing God has done is really hard. Everything he has created when he, when he gave us his word, he had made it such, he made it so easy for us to do it. And everything is, is um, it can be obtained. All goals can be reached. There's not one thing in God's word that he tells us to do. It cannot be done. The scripture said all things are possible to him. To, to who? To them that believe it by the grace of God. So we can believe it and we can get in line with it. It can happen in your life by the grace of God. It does not matter how much you have failed, how long you've been a failure. Guess what? That can change if you get the right things in your head and get around the right people. Just like a song say, you know, it, it, God can change it. God can turn it around if you want him to turn it around for you by the grace of God. And the Holy Spirit is always revealing things to you. Now, he's not going to twist your arm, make you get rid of anything that you, that you consider to be valuable. Um, have you ever spent time cleaning out your closet or cleaning out your uh, garage or whatever? There have been things that you've been there for years. You haven't used it, haven't seen it for years. But the moment you lay your eyes on it again, for some reason or another, you think you got to have it. You got to have it. You cannot afford to get rid of it. And the same thing will happen with the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit will will bring things to your attention that you need to get rid of, that you need to discard from your life. But he's not going to wrestle you. He's not going to fuss with you. He's not going to fight with you and say, you need to do this. He's going to reveal it to you. Then it's up to you whether or not you want to get rid of that old dress, that old uh, two box, uh, old tie, whatever, and that old part or whatever. The part is it, that's in that drawer it been in there for three or four years. You don't even have the vigor anymore. The vigor's gone. And you're still thinking that you need to hold on to it. Well, to be honest, that's foolishness. Why not get rid of it and make room for something new, for something better, something you can use when you need it or whatever? The only thing to do is just sitting there taking up space. Same thing, same thing with different habits in our life. They're just taking up space and causing us more pain, 
and causing us more trouble. And we wonder why God is not helping us. God cannot help you if you don't want him to help you. He will not lead you if you, if you don't want him to lead you. He's not going to twist your arm behind your back and make you do something if you don't want to do it. If you want to live like a jerk, he'll let you live like a jerk. If you want you, if you want to live in peace and joy and happiness, you can do that as well. But that all depends on what you believe, what you think, and what you want to do by the grace of God. Now, 1 Peter chapter 4 and verse 12, many times we're going to go through some changes and deal with some things in life. Everything that you deal with on a daily basis, daily in your life, God is trying to teach you something. Even with the bad things, you can learn something from it. One thing you can learn is you don't want to do that again. You don't like the consequences that come from that. And that's why the scripture said in the book of 1 Peter, chapter 4 and verse 12 in King James, he said, Beloved, think it not strange concerning the fire of trials, which is to try you. Some strange thing is going to come up. It's going to challenge you. That is not coming up just for the sake of just coming up, but the scripture said it's coming up to try you. Even though some strange things happen unto you, but you got a choice you can make. You can rejoice. Or you can succumb to it and start acting and start doing what you see or what has been revealed to you. Strange thing. I mean, um, and you know, in the last several weeks and last several months, just strange things just happen for no reason at all. But when it happened or whatever, you can learn, take that as an opportunity to learn something from it. Don't look at everything as being bad and being negative or whatever. Say, God, even though it's bad, but I'm going to learn something from this situation here so I can use it for your glory and for your honor or whatever. It's just like if you fail a test. Well, if you fail a test, the next time you take that test, you don't go back and, you don't go back and repeat and put the same answers that you got wrong last time. You don't want to do that. You want to get the answer, correct answer, and when you see that test, that question again, when that situation come up again, you want to be able to apply the right answer so you can get it right. So you don't have to continue to keep failing. You don't have to continue to keep uh, staying broke. God have told us how to maintain our finances, what we need to do. He's a give. People say a bird in the hand is better than a bird in the bush. That, that's not good thinking. That's not good thinking. You want to learn how to be a giver. Don't think about the bird in the bush. Don't think about the bird in the hand. You want to learn how to be a giver by the grace of God. You want to learn how to walk in love by the grace of God. If you do that, the Bible says in the book of um, Galatians, you what? You reap what you sow. If you sow good things, you're going to reap good things. See, a lot of things that we've thought about that has been said over years, we have embraced a lot of those things. And guess what? Unfortunately, a lot of people are still living with all those things, and they wonder why they can't get beyond that point because they're stuck. Listen to me. The door is open. Look at your neighbor and say, the door is open. Only thing you got to do is come in. If you come to my house and visit me and ring the day doorbell and I tell you, come in, and you just sit there and stand there at the door, that's on you. That's not on me. That's on you. Because I'm telling you to come in. I'm telling you the door is open. And you keep knocking on the door, ringing the doorbell or whatever. That's foolishness going to seed, really. When the only thing you have to do is twist, turn the knob, open the door, come on in and fellowship and enjoy the fellowship of what you go and, and partake what you're going to have to partake of to, or enjoy the fellowship what you're going to have to, to enjoy. So you don't have to stand up and beat on the door and say, hey, Pastor John, Pastor John, are you still in there? You there? I've told you the door is open. So what you want me to do? And some people have a tendency to go and open the door for you. And then some will stand there and look at you like a deer looking at a, in the headlights of a car. Strange and crazy. Come in. You just stand there and, don't, and won't move. You, don't want, you want to get rid of it. When anything God brings your attention about changing, you don't want to think, to think twice about it. 
you want to change it immediately. Because that's not going to help you if you continue to hold on to it. Same thing going back to that, that, that part that's in that um, toolbox of that. You can hold on to it until next year, to 10 years from now. But guess what? If you've already gotten rid of the, the car that it'll fit on and decides you're going to get rid of it and get rid of all the things it can be used on, you can keep it forever, but it's going to be of no value to you. You want to learn how to use things that's going to be of value and let God teach you what to think on and how to think what you need to think by the grace of God. In the book of James, James chapter 1 and verse 2, When you're going through challenges in life, whatever it may be, whether it be on the job, whether it be family, maybe illness or whatever you may be dealing with or whatever, the Bible said, my brethren, include sisters as well, sisters too, see, count it all joy when you fall into various temptation. Things going to come. You don't have to be doing anything. You don't have to be out seeking anything, but stuff's going to happen. But when it does happen, James is telling the church here at Jerusalem what they need to do. He needs to count on our joy because in the midst of that pain, in the midst of that suffering, in the midst of that disappointment, you can benefit from it somehow or another. You can gain something from it. By trusting and depending upon God. That's if, you, that's if you're open to the Holy Spirit. And I've learned over the years that, that the Holy Spirit will teach you some things if you're willing and open to it to be taught. But again, like I say, he's not going to take a hammer and beat it in your head and make you, and make you get it. He's going to make it available to you. He even sometimes warns you three or four times. Even through the word, through a song. How many times have you turned on the radio, or turned on and, and started playing the radio, and all of a sudden there was a song about something you're dealing with? That is the Holy Spirit speaking to you, telling you, say, guess what? All hope is not gone. All hope is not lost. You can overcome this. Because this is a song here to remind you that you can overcome. It's just like B.B. B. B. Um, Winning, I mean, C.C. Winning singing his song, Believe. If you can believe it, you can have it by the grace of God. So don't look at everything that comes to you in a negative way. It got to be the devil or whatever. God can be using this situation to get your attention, to get you to think about some things about a certain situation or whatever. Because many of us won't change unless really thunder and lightning take place many times. Some of us have to be sometimes be, be prodded. Sometimes we have to go through some painful experience before we can get it. But just learn this. It learns that, hey, things can be easy. It don't always have to be challenging by the grace of God. It can be very easy for us if we listen to what God is telling us to do. And not only that, but also the things that you learn over the years by going, listening to God's word. And Jack, like James said, you don't want to just be a hearer, but you also want to be a doer of the word as well by the grace of God. Because what you're hearing, it should be changing your life. If it's not changing your life, then you need to reevaluate what you're hearing. If you can go back and continue, have you heard a good word and continue to keep doing those things that, that are wrong, then something is wrong either with the word or either with what you're hearing. And I can assure you there's nothing wrong with the word. There's something wrong with the hearer. If someone does something to you, it does not matter what they've done to you and when they did it to you. It's up to you. Look at your neighbor says, it's up to you. How you want to deal with it. 
You want to let it go? You want to hold on to it? Or you want to just let it marinate in your life, how you, however you choose to do it? But I can assure you, if you let it marinate in your life, only thing you're going to do is cause the Bible talks about in the book of Ephesians, I believe, talking about the root of bitterness. The root of bitterness will come up. And you're going to run into some situations where you're going to need to deal with that situation, but you got to be willing. You can't confront. You can't change what you're not willing to confront. If you're willing to confront it, then you can change it. But as long as you can continue to, to justify it. You know, it's just like some people, you know, have been molested by family members or whatever. And I know it's a, 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 I've never been molested by a family member, but I can't imagine the devastation it brings into your life to be able to have a real relationship with other people, to be able to trust other people. But at some point, look at your neighbors at some point, you got to learn how and make a decision to forgive that person or forgive those p- people that have mistreated you. And remember, remember what Peter, what Jesus told Peter, how often should I forgive? Seven times seven. Whatever it takes, whatever is necessary, you should forgive that person and move on. By, you got to remember, they're not hurting you. I mean, you're not hurting them. You are hurting yourself by holding them in contempt, by holding this grudge against them for what they did to you by the grace of God. When you can be living in the freedom of God's blessing or whatever, by the grace of God. And the Bible said in the book of 1 John, you are an overcomer. You can overcome anything. Look at your neighbor and say, anything. Regardless of what it is, regardless of how bad it is, regardless of how bad it was, you can overcome anything if you turn it over to God, by God's grace, by his mercy and his, and, and, and his power. Now, also, when you go through storms in life, storms are going to come. You can't prevent them. The Bible says in the book of John, John said, or Jesus telling the disciples, said, in this world, you're going to have some tribulation. But be not discouraged. But, be, but guess what? He told them, don't worry. Don't fret. Because he have overcome the world. And so, therefore, you can overcome the world, too, when the storms of life come. Sometimes you're going to get hit harder than you do other times. But when, it, when you get hit, there's not time to run away from God. Then it's time to run to God. Because just like in the book of um, St. Luke, St. Luke, the sixth chapter, in verses 47 and through 49, you all me with the story about the storm, but the house that was built upon the storm. And so when it was, was built upon the foundation. So because it was built upon the foundation, because of what you believe and what you've learned to yield yourself to, when you're going through storms or whatever, it will determine how successful and how long you stay in the storm. If you've always made a point Say, so you know what? I know there's a storm, but guess what? I'm not, it's, I'm not going to allow it to stay. I'm not going to stay in this storm. I can get out of this storm quickly because of what I believe and based upon what the words say to me by the word of God. I can get out of this storm. But if you decide, again, if you decide to stay in that storm, guess what? The storm is going to be there. And the Bible said it's going to beat vehemently against you. And guess what? If you're not careful of what you believe, what you're thinking, and what you're doing, and the foundation you're built on, you will have a catastrophic failure in your life. And you don't want that, by the grace of God. But who's, this is all, all this is left up to the person himself. God don't control your life. He gives you ideas. He gives you his word to help you to enhance your life, to help you have a better life. But he don't make you do anything. And that's why it's good to say, hey, stuff's going to happen. Stuff's going to come. Trouble's going to happen. You're going to have some good days. 
You're going to have some bad days. But you don't have to let yourself, let those bad days outweigh the good days by the grace of God. It all depends on you how long you allow them to stay, how long you allow them to last. That's up to you. Just like a few months in Huntsville, Alabama, man, it was hot as all get up here. It was hot as Hades. But guess what? But things are changing now. The temperature is changing now. And just remember, everything you're dealing with is only for a season. Only for a season. It's going to change. It's just not a matter how. It's just a matter when. It's going to change. Now, are you ready when the change comes? Are you available to make the necessary correction when the change comes? So you don't have to repeat this episode again. You don't have to repeat this situation again. Are you ready? And that's why it becomes a challenge to so many people because it's just like the children of Israel. And not that God couldn't take them out of the, out the wilderness. They would not allow God to take them out because they could not believe God. When trust God to get them out of the wilderness. And God didn't even told them what he was going to do for them. I'm just not going to take you to a place, but I'm going to take you to a place that's flowing with milk and honey. A good place. But instead of them trusting God for that, they decided to listen to one another and decided to listen, listen and look at their circumstances, where they come from and what they was used to, and they continued to stay there for 40 years. And many of them died off in the wilderness. Not because of God. Because they wouldn't trust God. Because of their unbelief. And that's why it's important when storms come, they're going to come. They're going to beat. They're going to come in, in hurricanes or whatever. And just like the hurricane came in uh, a few weeks ago here in, in down in Florida or whatever. And because of you are a child of God, if you condition your mind and get the right things in your head, you have the authority to take over the challenges that try to overtake you. The storms that come in your life, you have the power. People say, well, there's nothing I can do. That's not true. There is something you can do. When God created man, he gave man dominion over all things. What is all things? Everything. Everything in this world, we have dominion over it. Now, it's up to us whether or not we want to exercise that dominion. There's nothing you're dealing with right now by the grace of God that you cannot overcome if you get the right belief in your head, the right thoughts, and start thinking on the right things. There's nothing you can't overcome. People say, well, I'm born this way. Listen, let me tell you that even though you're born that way, let me give you a scripture. 2 Corinthians 5, 17. If any man be in Christ, he's a new creation. Old things are passed away, and behold, all things become new. So that negates or nullifies how you were born, the way you were born, what you suffer when you were born, it negates all that type of stuff. Now, if you want to hold on to it, then stop making excuses for yourself. Tell yourself, I enjoy being this way. I enjoy living like this. I enjoy the pain and the heartache I get from this. I enjoy this. Stop saying that, well, God can't help me and I can't just, just can't get rid of it. That's not true. You are, if you have accepted Christ, Christ Jesus, your Lord and Savior, you are a new Creation, all things, all things have passed away. And behold, all things have become new. Your life has been reset. You got a brand new start by the grace of God. And then in the book of Romans, Romans chapter 8 and verse 28. When you're dealing with stuff, Romans 8, 28 said, what, what do we know? We know what? All things are working together for our good or for their good. For those who are called according to his purpose. It's not working together, it's not working together good for everybody. Even though a lot of people use that scripture. Read the scripture and see what it says. We know that all things work together for good to them that love God to them 
who are called according to his purpose. And it's everybody. A lot of things are working against us because we need to make some changes. And God is sending a warning to us before destruction come, always come what? Warning. And before warning, when, before, before something else chaotic take place. But many times, the Bible say, God allowed. We know. What do we know? We know that all things, not some things, but all things work together. Work together for good to them. That love God. And see Paul was talking to the church in Rome here. He was not saying this just to be saying this. But he, he knew for a fact. If you love God. Even the bad things that happen in your life. You can rejoice. You can get some good out of it by the grace of God. Just like cooking beans. I like to use some old country analysis. You know, you can, you can cook beans and they can stick to the bottom of the pot. If you don't stir the bottom of that pot and pour the top of it off, pour the beans off the top of that what's been stuck, you would never even know that that pot of beans has been stuck, has been burnt. But the moment you get involved in it and start stirring that pot and mixing that all up together, you just ruin a good pot of beans. You just ruined it. You don't want to do that by the grace of God. You don't want to do that. And then by you knowing this, knowing that all things are working together for the good, then why are you frustrated? Why are you stressed? Why are you worrying? Why are you upset? If you know that everything that God is doing is working together, working out for your good, then, then why are you acting like that? Why you got an attitude? Why are you so short or whatever, if you know? Again, like I said, that's why we have to, if we believe it, we have to go back and evaluate what we believe and making sure that what we believe is the real thing. It's the real stuff. And you know for a fact, there's nothing like real food. <laughs> Hello? Nothing like real food. Other food can, can, can satisfy you. It can pastify you. But nothing can really bring satisfaction in your life like real food. Man, when you get that real food, eat that good meal, man, you can ride by, you can go and sleep in McDonald's. And guess what? You won't even think about a hamburger. You can even smell it. Hamburger won't even cross your mind. Why? Because you're satisfied. And this is what God is wanting us to do. Not only he wanted to help us, but he wanted to bring us to a place where we're at rest in him. When you get at rest in God, what does that mean to be at rest in God? To be at rest in God means that you know, you know for a fact that he got your back. It's going to work out. All things going to work out for your good. That's when you enter to rest. You're not worrying about it. That's why, that's why the scripture tells us if, if God can take care of the fowls of the air and close the, can close the lilies, how much more are you greater than those? If he can take care of those, surely he can take care of you. But if your mind, if your thoughts don't believe that, don't think that, don't continue to be able to operate in that, you think when you get into trouble, just like a disciple when they're out there in the, in the Sea of Galilee, God, you don't care for us. You brought us all the way out here to perish. We're going to die in this storm out here. That's what they start thinking. That's what they start to, coming up with all these crazy thoughts or whatever. And that's the same thing will happen to you if you're not, if you're not careful and get rid of these negative thoughts in your head about who you are and whose you are and what God can do for you by the grace of God. Things are good for you, but let me tell you, they can be a whole lot better than they are if we just trust God and let go and let God by the grace of God. And that's why you say you want to enter into a place. You know, you're like most runners. 
for a lot of you that that are not um, that have not did a lot of running, you may not be able to resonate. This may not resonate with you, but you can get to a point. You can run so much, or you can get to a point where you can relax and run. Has anybody ever been there? And when you get into it, we call it strive. Look at your neighbors and strive. When you get into that strive, man, you can run for miles and won't even think about it. And, and, the, and the great thing about it, you won't feel as tired when you get to the end of your race because you'll enter into a place of rest. You're not, you're not struggling anymore, huffing and puffing or whatever. Now you can relax and get into your strive. Not their strive, but your strive. And that's why sometimes we be in the military, they used to have what we call a pace setter. They let that pace setter set the pace for everybody else. Because you got some people out there, man, they're just like gazelles. Boy, they'll take off and they be like a deer. They're ready to go. And about 25 meters down the road, you don't have a formation. Everybody str strung all up and down the road. But if you can get into a, a get a good pace setter, especially if you're going on a distance, and let that person get in the right rhythm, you can start with the formation and you can end with the formation. But if you don't get the right pace setter and get into a place where you can rest, like I say, you're going to have a long day because people are going to fall out, people are going to get, over, um, going to get excited, and they're going to begin to start hyperventilate, and they're going to end up falling out the race. By having the right pace setter, they can help you to run. And you can do it by the grace of God. And this is the Holy Spirit. He is our pace setter. He helps you to get in the right stride. So not only you can go, but you can go the distance. And be, you can run, as the scripture said, and not be tired. Because when we get tired and get upset, we have a tendency to retaliate. But guess what? But by the grace of God, if the Holy Spirit leading and guiding you, guess what? <laughs> you won't get tired. That's why your belief is so important to you. When you got good belief, it helps create a good division. I'll share four points with you right quick. Belief create good um, great vision for you. It creates a vision for you to follow. When you wake up in the morning, you're not just wasting your life or just wasting your time. You got a purpose in life. You can see something. You know something. You got somewhere you can go. You got somewhere you want to be. A certain place you want to be. Vision. You can see it. And no devil in hell can come along and, and can cause a distraction to you that can prevent you from not being able to see the goal of where you're trying to go. That's how people reach the goal. And the Bible says in the book of Proverbs, without a vision, the people perish. But without a clear mental picture of where you want to go, without clear good thoughts in your head, that you can see where you want to be, where you want to be five years from now. People say, well, I don't know where I want to be. From. Well, guess what? Think of something that's positive where you want to be, by the grace of God, and continue to keep working there, keep working toward that goal. One place you want to be, you want to be able to be walking with God in five years from now. You want to be walking in good health and having a sound mind by the grace of God. So if nothing else, and, be, and you know you want to have those things if nothing else by the grace of God. But when you got a good sound mind and a good vision of where you're going and when you're aiming at something by the grace of God, God can help you get there. But if you have, well, I want to go to Decatur. Well, how you get to Decatur? I don't know. When you want to go to Decatur? I don't know. What you going to do when you get to Decatur? I don't know. Why you want to go to Decatur? I don't know. Well, see, God can't help you there. 
But if you know where Decatur's at, at Decatur, Alabama's at, you know how to get there. When you get in your auto, the automobile, guess what? You can head in that direction. And you know for a fact, it's just not a matter how, it's a matter when, you will end up in Decatur, Alabama. Because you got a vision of it. There's something there that you want. There's something there you want to do. There's something there you want to experience. But those saying goes, if you don't aim for nothing, you won't hit nothing. That's why it's important to be able to have a purpose with your life, with your money. That's why you don't take all your money and just blow it because you got a, you got a purpose for your money and what you want to do with your money. That's why you want to, that's why you want to allow your life to be destroyed. You want to walk in divine health. You got a purpose for your life by the grace of God. Next point. Beliefs creates strength and will. Strength and will. If you're willing, you got a willing mind, God will give you the strength to get there. Because Paul has told the church at Philippi what? I can do all things through Christ which strengthens me. And if you got goals and got dreams and things you want to reach, it does not matter your age. Look at your neighbor and say, it does not matter your age. If you don't give up on the dream, if you don't give up on the idea of where you're trying to go, God will give you the strength to get there. And he'll give you the willingness to help you get there by the grace of God if you allow him to. That's why a lot of people, you know, they're waiting pretty, uh, pretty late in life for they decide what they want to do in life. Well, that's not a bad thing, but the bad thing about it, you're wasting some golden years. But now it's catch-up time. Then you're hoping you can pray that you can catch up and make up for all the lost time that you made. But he'll help you. God is a very present help when? In a time of need and a time of trouble. He'll help you. he never give up on you. So your beliefs really help strengthen you and help keep you focused and help, help not only help you keep you focused, but it helps to give you strength and willpower to say that, guess what? I know I'm an overcomer. But so many people have failed so much, they don't know what overcoming is. They think that part of their life is to fail. But what you got to do is you got to erase that thinking and start coming up with some new ideas, with some new beliefs, and get around some people, get around, get, stay away from all these naysayers. People that are always negative. There's nothing positive, good, nothing positive come out of their mouth. But everything is negative. Not only that, but also beliefs help you to stay resilient. Help keep you resilient. In other words, in other words, it helps you recover from trouble. Because guess what? The Bible says in the book of Proverbs, if a righteous man falls seven times, he gets up. Well, I done fell so many times, uh, there ain't no hope for me. I've heard people say that. Well, I'm too old now, there ain't no hope for me. Long as there's breath, there's hope. But it's not over until you say it's over. And when you say it's over, you could be right. It could be over for you. But that don't mean it's over for God. That means that you have decided as far as you want to go by the grace of God, and guess what? And you, you don't want to go any, any, any further. And see, not only that, but see, you can recover. When resilient, you recover quickly. You don't lay down and look at how many, count all, how many scars you got. If you get one scar and say, that's enough for me. Hey, I'm getting up out of this stuff. I got to go. I'm not staying here. I don't like the way I feel being here. I don't like this, these feelings that I'm getting, that, these thoughts that I'm experiencing. I don't like it. So I'm not going to stay here. So I need to get up out of this situation. 
but with the right belief. If you know for a fact, the Bible says in the book of Philippians, if I think the right things, if I meditate on the right things, guess what? I can overcome those negative things by the grace of God. That be in virtue, that be in praise. Think on these things. Don't think on your failures. Think on your successes or whatever. I'm not a loser, but I'm a winner by the grace of God. And once you learn how to become a winner, you get you so used to winning to the point, well, guess what? When something come up, you know for a fact, man, ain't no way in the world I'm going to do that because that's failure all the way. I'm not a failure. I'm a winner. So you start picking and choosing the things going to help you become a winner. And the fourth thing is that beliefs ignites and activates. It ignites and activates. Because when you got the right beliefs, you'll come up with the right motives by the grace of God. You'll find a way out of midst of no way. In the midst of all the chaos and all the confusion that, that you're dealing with, you'll figure out a way and say, you know what? I can get this done. This can happen for me by the grace of God. Like the scripture said, in the Bible said, they asked the question, said, is there anything too hard for the Lord? No, it's not. Nothing too hard for him. He can fix it by the grace of God. Got one more scripture you want to get ready to close out. Um, 1 Timothy chapter, um, 1 Timothy chapter 4 and verse 15. Not only you want to learn those good things, getting the right beliefs in your head, so you can start living, acting, and responding to them. But the Bible said in, in the easy to read translation, it said, continue to do these things. Are you listening to me? Continue to put them into practice. And every time you have a challenge, you have a trial in your life, that's an opportunity for you to do what? To practice. To implement. To say, you know what? This tripped me up last time, but I'm not going to let it trip me up this time. By the grace of God. Then also in the Amplified Version, we'll put the Amplified Version of there on the overhead. He said, do what? Practice and cultivate and meditate upon these duties. And Paul is talking to Timothy. Paul had laid out some things that he should do. And he's telling him not only just do it, but make, it a, make a habit to put it into action every day. Work at it. Make it a daily occurrence. And you know what? I'm going to do this. The old flesh ain't going to want to do it. Ain't want to do it. But you got to tell the flesh what? You have no control over the spirit. And you can bring the flesh into subjection into the spirit. Make the spirit... Control your flesh by the grace of God. Don't let the flesh control your spirit, but you let your spirit control your flesh. And say, you know what? This is not hard as I thought it was going to be. Going back to Paul in the, in, in the book of Flip, in the book of Philippians, I can do all things through Christ which strengthens me by the grace of God. And God can do it. And when you get to that point, guess what? That's why it is important for you to take a look at what you learn. The question is, is it working for you? Can you get it to work? If it's not working for you, then you need to probably discard it and look at, and look at, um, look at some other stuff for what you believe by the grace of God. And once you get it to working, what you want to do, you want to continue to keep, keep practicing of it by the grace of God. Every head bowed and every eye closed, we're going to get ready to close. This morning, as always, the decision is up to you. 
You don't want to continue to hold on to things that are not working, Miss Hilda, um, that are not working by the grace of God. And so you want to continue to hold on to things that are working so you can embrace them and continue to keep putting them into action and practice them more and more and more so you continue to get sharper and sharper by the grace of God. Amen? Amen. Every head bowed and their eye closed. Father, we thank you for your word this morning. Thank you for what you're doing and thank you for what you've already done. And we just give you all the glory and all the praise. Thank you for your word. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Miss Hill, we're going to come in.